Hello. You are most welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Real Impartation Movement on Tuesday Night's Anatomy with Daniel Okwan. Today's section, we continue with our general embryology. And this time around, we want to look at week three of intrauterine life, the events that take place there. Already we've seen what happens in the second week of intrauterine life. So please, if you've not watched it, please get that video link and of course watch it. But of course, we know that in the second week of intrauterine life is tagged the week of two. And that one, we form the bilamina embryonic disc. And that bilamina embryonic disc will be replaced by this, you know, trilamina embryonic disc. And that is why we call that bilamina embryonic disc made up of hypoderm, I'm sorry, I mean hypoblast and of course epiblast, okay, calling it the primitive embryonic disc. And that is why in the third week of intrauterine life, the events called gastrulation leading to the formation of the trilamina embryonic disc, yeah, the trilamina embryonic disc will be called, you know, the definitive embryonic disc because all other structures of the body, yes, will be derived from this you know embryonic disc and therefore it makes sense that we call it the definitive embryonic disc and so without much ado let's set the ball rolling so there we are now i'm just interested in what happens to this portion of the embryonic disc okay we saw that in the second week we had these columnar shaped structures or cells which form what we call the epiblast and then below it we have this I mean, cuboidal shaped structures known as hypoblast. Okay, now from second week to third week, what happens is that we see that at one point of this embryonic disc, this uh, bilaminar embryonic disc, we see that cell, some cells of the hypoblast at one end begins to elongate. So, like you can see, the cells over here, okay, they become columnar in nature. Now, once I can see these columnar shaped cells, then it tells me that this portion of the embryo is the head end or the cranial end of the embryo. And therefore, the opposite aspect where we don't have elongation of these hypoblast cells becomes what we call the I mean, tail end or the caudal end of the embryo. Okay, now these structures which elongate at one point, okay, becomes what we call the procaudal plate. Procaudal plate. I'll show you that the procaudal plate eventually becomes, you know, the future mouth. Okay, so this is what we call the procaudal plate. It therefore tells us that this procaudal plate is the first structure, okay, of the embryonic disc that determines the craniocaudal axis of the embryo. Okay, so this is that portion which is able to decide the cranial cordal axis that this side is the cranial end of the embryo and that, therefore the opposite aspect becomes the caudal end of the embryo. So that's what um, we see. So taking, I mean, from a superior view, if I'm looking at it from top, then what happens is that I'll see the embryonic disc. Yes, this is the head end. So you can see that this embryonic disc is more or less like having its cranial end to be broader compared to the caudal end. The caudal end tends to be narrow, okay. So this area, okay, you can see this procaudal plate, and therefore this is the head end of the embryo, okay. Therefore, the opposite aspect becomes the tail end of the embryo. Now, what we see is that let me just go back briefly and show you something. Now, again, another thing which is also happening this time round, two of course the epiblast cells of the epiblast is that now at the caudal end of the embryo, the epiblast cells they begins to proliferate rapidly. Okay, and they form something we call primitive streak, which will move, of course, from the caudal end towards the cranial end of the embryo. Okay, so it means that at the caudal end of the embryonic disc, we will also be seeing the primitive streak. And this primitive streak is derived from, of course, the epiblast. Okay, now it is this primitive streak which is able, okay, to give rise to the gem, definitive, you know, gem layers. Okay, so that is uh, what, I mean, we will see. So we will look at that. But of course, if you look at it, this procaudal plate, I told you that it becomes what we call the future mouth. Okay, so it, that's why we, we also call it the buccal pharyngeal membrane. Otherwise, something we will call, you know, the oropharyngeal membrane. And therefore, the opposite aspect here is behind or posterior to the primitive streak. We have what we call the clocal, uh, clocal membrane. And this clocal membrane will become, of course, the anal opening. So we will look at these ones. So there we are. Now I told you that this primitive streak, okay, which will be moving from, of course, you know, the caudal end where we have the epiblast, okay, towards the cranial end 
of the embryo. Okay, so this primitive streak, okay, yes, the proliferating cells of the epiblast will be moving there. But in fact, it will be moving through a groove, and that groove will be called the primitive groove. Now, at the cranial end, okay, I'll show you, cranial end of the streak, okay, there's this, I mean, nodular mass coming from this primitive streak, which we call it the primitive node. Or, you know, we can call it primitive knot, which otherwise we call it Hansen's node, Hansen's node. So, you either call it primitive knot, or you call it, you know, pre, uh, you know, Hansen's node, okay, so that is that one over here. And of course, within the Hansen's node, there will be a pit. Okay, that will be the primitive pit. Okay, so primitive streak. Yes, we have the proliferating cells moving from the caudal end of what we call the epiblast cells towards, you know, the uh, cranial end. And it will be going through a groove known as primitive groove. Yes, at the cranial end of this streak, we have this nodular mass over there, which is coming from here, cells of the streak itself, which we call the primitive knot or primitive node, which we also call it Hansen's node. And within it, there will be a pit, which we call it primitive, you know, pit. Okay, so that is what we see. So you can see that these proliferating cells coming from the epiblast, which we call a primitive streak, will first give rise to what we call, will first displace the hypoblast cells. And of course, I mean, uh, be, uh, replace the hypoblast cells with this group of cells and these felt cells will be called the endoderm so endoderm is the first structure which is derived from this primitive streak okay as far as the embryonic gem layers or the definitive gem layers are concerned so primitive streak will first give rise to the endoderm and that endoderm will displace will push out these hypoblast cells and therefore become i mean those ones and then the second group of cells, perforating cells coming from the streak, will, I mean, will form this kind of, will lie on top of this, I mean, uh, endoderm and becomes what we call the mesoderm. And then eventually the third group of cells will, I mean, give rise to this, I mean, epiblast. So what are we seeing? We are saying that the streak, primitive streak, yes, as it moves, it will be forming, yes, first endoderm and that endoderm will be formed when the cells of the hypoblast are displaced okay by cells coming from the streak and then it will be followed by of course i mean lying on top okay another layer of cells proliferating coming from the primitive streak will lie on top of the i mean endoderm and becomes of course the mesoderm and then we will have that of the third group of cells forming uh, what you call the i mean uh, epidem, uh, sorry, forming actually the ectoderm. Okay, so that is what I mean we are going to see. So, as you can see, this is actually coming from the mesoderm, like the proliferating cells, okay, of the streak moving everywhere. So, I'll show you. So, there we are now. Another thing which forms, okay, and that one we will look at it in greater detail. That is the notochord. That notochord, now, if you saw, we said that the first structure. That decides cranial caudal axis, yes, is the procaudal plate. Because once you can see elongation of the endo, endo uh, I mean, hypoblast cells at one end, we know that's the cranial end of the embryo. And therefore, the opposite aspect becomes a caudal end. Now, this, that, this time around, the structure, we is able to determine the laterality of the embryo, as well as, of course, ventral and dorsal aspect of the embryo, is what we call the notochord. Now, this notochord actually is actually a ectodermal structure, but it moves in the midline of the embryo, okay, running in the mesoderm. Okay, so some people think, yes, it is actually having a mesodermal origin. No, so around the 16 to 18, we will have this notochord. I will show you the notochord, which will form, you know, that kind of axis, okay, of the embryo, the axial mesoderm, so to speak. Okay, so that, that one, yes, it forms under it, and therefore it's able to influence you know this kind of ectoderm convert we look at i mean the notochord again and then we look at it but what am i interested in showing you so this is the notochord this notochord now we said that yes there's a cranial end of the embryo because you can see what we call the future mouth which is of course the procaudal plate or the bucopharyngeal membrane and all the opposite aspect being the local membrane and we said that at the caudal end of the embryo we said that there will be a streak, okay, coming from the epiblast cells, okay, proliferating cells over there, which will be moving through a groove, okay, and then eventually, yes, forming this nodular mass, which we call the primitive, you know, knot or the Hansen's node. Now, cranial coming from the primitive uh, Hansen's node or the primitive knot will be these cells. 
forming okay from it's actually coming from the epibla because it's coming from this node and this primitive knot okay is actually also coming from the streak okay ectodermal in origin or it's coming from actually the epiblast okay so it's going this way okay towards the cranial end and that is what you call the notochord notochord forming the axis although it's coming from the you know uh, the what you call primitive knots and for that matter it's coming from of course the epiblast cells yes it is still going to go through the mesoderm it's going through the mesoderm forming the axis of the embryo so we form an actual the azl mesoderm so to speak so that's the notochord so um that is what i mean i want you to actually know but what you see is that in the mesoderm what happens is that yes the proliferating cells of the streak forming the mesoderm will get to everywhere except two areas so we get to know that mesoderm will be absent in two areas of this embryonic disc and these two areas are one the procordial plate itself okay where of course we, we said it's going to be the bucopharyngeal membrane the future mouth as well as of course the cloacal membrane okay at the caudal and becoming of course the anal opening so yes it makes sense the reason is that if you are going to have connective tissue there connective tissue will be forming muscle you know uh, sorry mesoderm will be forming muscle yes will be forming this kind of connective tissue yes connective tissue including bone cartilage and all that so it means that at the end of the day these two areas they will have to rupture the membrane will have to rupture so it's not supposed to be so strong okay I mean so that it's I uh, wouldn't be able to rupture that is why these two areas are devoid of what we call the proliferating you know mesoderm so um yes one thing that we have to know is that this streak yes around what we call the fourth week of intrauterine life yes this streak will have to regress okay the streak will have to regress other than that what happens is that it may lead to this thing what you call it sacrococcygeal teratoma yes at the caudal end of the embryo okay if this one doesn't regress okay if it doesn't regress then what will happen is that the neural crest cells over there we will look at all those ones i mean present may give rise to this thing we call sacrococcygeal teratoma okay so um, that is what we see if there is still persistent i mean primitive streak especially in the caudal end okay off the streak yes it will lead to this one so i believe you find this helpful yes we look at the fate of what we call the ectoderm that we form we will look at of course that of the mesoderm yes you look at yes the structures which will be derived from all these structures in our i mean later sections i believe you find this helpful okay have a good night and may the good lord richly bless you